Good morning, Katie. Hi there. Uh, although I guess it's afternoon where you are. Uh, I'm Sarah Posner, and this is The Posner Show. And my guest today is Katie Englehart. Katie is a London-based journalist who wrote recently for CNN about the Sunday, Sunday Assembly, or which is otherwise known as the Atheist Megachurch, which, as she chronicles in this piece, uh, has suffered its first schism, <laughs> I <Right>. guess, <laughs> um, whereby a group uh, that had been following the Sunday Assembly in New York City uh, broke away, claiming that the founders of the Sunday Assembly did not welcome atheists. <laughs> so with that sort of provocative setup, um, let's, let's talk about the Sunday Assembly. So for people who aren't familiar with that, um, it's, it was kind of a startup by a couple of British comedians, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's right. Um, about a year ago, a couple of British comedians, Pippa Evans and Sanderson Jones, started, um, I guess, a, a, an atheist church in East London. Mm -hmm. um, it was in a neighborhood called Dalston, which is sort of trendy and, um, and, and filled with 20-somethings. And uh, their idea was to have a place for atheists to congregate. So I actually attended the, the one of the church's first services last April. Uh, it was a, a sort of a small venture, maybe 100 or, or 200 people. Um, and, and yeah, since then it's really taken off. It got a lot. It got a lot of attention here in London. Mm -hmm. um, they ended up moving to a, a big hall in central London, a very elegant kind of venue. And um, and then in September they uh, started a franchise. So, and the franchise, as far as I understand it from reading about it uh, in the U.S. media, um, they, they started a Kickstarter campaign and they were looking to raise a lot of money so that there could, or not a lot of money, but enough money so that these um, atheist churches, and perhaps calling them atheist megachurches is a little bit overblown because the, sure. uh, maybe the mega part is missing uh, thus far. Um, and that they were cropping up in cities all across America. That's right. Um I mean, the story the founders tell is that they started getting emails uh, from people all over the world asking uh, asking them to start Sunday assemblies, um, you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, the founders had the idea to create a franchise so that people could take the model, uh, the rules, the motto, the, the trademark, the logo, all of that, and transplant it. So they picked, um, uh, I think, 40 cities to start with, um, and in September they, they started rolling them out. So the founders actually did their own kind of road shows going around to North America, to Australia, New Zealand, um, and, uh, and starting new branches. So, you know, the, the interest, I think, was organic to those places, but, um, uh, but the, the, the model's been transplanted, I think, uh, you know, to, to a lot of different places. Now, I've, ta I've talked to a few people um, about this phenomenon and in the sort of secular atheist community here in the United States. And uh, there was there's sort of a mix of, of uh, reactions to it. Mm -hmm. one, one reaction is, well, sure, you know, if, um, you know, atheists need a community and a, co a place to congregate, just like people who have a God belief. Um, so it's nice to have that community. Um, even though we don't share a belief around a sacred text or a God being or anything like that. Um, and for some people, the reaction was more like, mm, I'm not really, I'm not really comfortable with that because church is what we as atheists wanted to get away from. Um, and we don't really need a church to have an identity as an atheist or secular movement. And we don't really need church to have a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think you summed that up. Nicely, I, I think there's a uh, there are varied reasons why why people attend Sunday assemblies um, or other atheist gatherings. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you touch on the sense of community. I think there's a bit more to it than that. Mm -hmm. I think um, you know a Sunday assembly offers um, you know an an interesting lecture, uh, conceivably right. uh, a moment to reflect. Uh, group singing, free food. I mean, there are all sorts <laughs> of reasons, right? Yeah. And uh, and. And so I think that's something that, that a lot of people uh, would like. Uh, they would like it without God. Now, um, on the other hand, there, there are certainly a lot of people for whom atheism is, um, is a statement or a practice of absence and non-alignment. I know, you know, even chatting with my father about this, for him, being an atheist is about 
being non-aligned. Right. So an atheist church would be very, very unattractive to him. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of criticism that the church has attracted, I think it's interesting. I imagined that it would be mostly theists who um, – sort of disagreed with the idea of the Sunday assembly, people who, um, you know, resented their own traditions and customs being sort of pillaged and mutilated by atheists. But, right. but actually, I think a lot of the conversations happened amongst atheists, which mm -hmm. I think is very healthy. So let's talk a little bit about this split that's taken place. In sure. your piece, um, you know, so the Sunday assembly calls itself a godless congregation. But then you go on to talk about how the breakaway group calls itself the godless revival <laughs> and the split is over whether they can talk about being atheists or not. Yeah. I mean, which seems a little <laughs> odd. <laughs> yeah. The atheist church is definitely not that atheistic. Okay. Um, I think that's clear. I think at the beginning, uh, you know, the phrase atheist church was used a lot and by the founders too. Mm -hmm. um, and there was an idea, you know, in the early services that this is a gathering of people who do not believe that God exists. Right. Later that message was sort of diluted. And so, so now, um, attending a Sunday assembly, at least in London, godlessness as such is, is rarely discussed. The founders don't talk actively about a deity. Um, they talk a lot about things like wonder and awe and, um, dazzle, but, but rarely do they make firm statements saying that God does not exist. Um, so what happened in New York, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a Sunday assembly started there, I think in September, um, although it had been building for a while. Um, and, uh, there ended up being this, this divergence between people who were really happy with the model, um, the Sunday assembly model as it was, you know, practiced in London and people who, who were dissatisfied with the lack of kind of firm atheism. They wanted a real atheist church, which is something that the Sunday assembly sort of promised at the beginning and, and right. hasn't really delivered. So, right. so yeah, a group uh, has spun off. They call themselves the godless revival. So they're godless revivalists and, um, and yeah, they, they promise a, a more strict atheism. So, um, Jones, uh, Sanderson Jones, one of the founders of the Sunday assembly, um, you say in your piece, he wrote in August in a, I guess in a blog post, how atheist should our assembly be? The short answer to that is not very. Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you think happened there? Was it, were they getting bad PR by talking about atheism too much? Were they, um, did they feel like they were alienating potential congregants by talking about uh, atheism too much? Did they consider atheism too negative? Did they want to talk about wonder and awe and dazzlement more? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a number of reasons. I don't think they got bad publicity because of the atheist church. In fact, I think they got a lot of publicity because of the atheist yeah. church title. But because I think of the eventually, oxymoronic title. Yeah, yeah, I think eventually they wanted to appeal to a bigger tent. Um, mm -hmm. So in, in the article, I cited a, a Pew Forum a poll from 2012, which shows that um, uh, you know, of the, you know, 20 or so percent of Americans who define themselves as without religion, only a very, very small percentage of that, yeah. uh, of those people identify as atheists. Atheist. Right. And so, uh, church that's kind of, um, you know, not believing, but, you know, kind of spiritual and, and kind of wishy-washy on, on the question of atheism is probably going to attract more people. Um, I think, some original supporters will be disappointed, but if it's a numbers game, I think it's probably a smart move. <laughs> but is that necessarily true outside the United States? Because I, I get the sense that godlessness is not as reviled in European countries that, as it is in the U.S. So in, in the U.K., where you are, mm -hmm. I mean, was the godlessness as much of an issue as it was here? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think it's it's actually really interesting in the UK context because in the last year or so, um, there has been a, a kind of a backlash against um, vocal atheists. A, a number of sort of atheist champions, leaders, Richard Dawkins and the mm -hmm. like, have made some some controversial statements over the last year or so about uh, religion, particularly about Islam. Right. And um, 
you know, I'm not sure that all of the, the criticism of Dawkins, et cetera, is, is justified, but I think certainly there's an idea, a belief in the UK that atheists are um, uh, increasingly a, a nasty bunch or that they're uh, intolerant towards faith or mm -hmm. this or that. So I think, I think maybe the atheist title isn't, you know, a, a huge selling point here, um, although uh, probably no match for um, American, the America's hatred of atheism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so, so what do you think that people who go, so, so with this atheist split, the atheists are basically saying to the Sunday Assembly folks, look, we want something that's more explicitly atheistic. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but they haven't, this hasn't ruined the Sunday Assembly. The Sunday Assembly is still going forward with the people who like its dazzlement and awe message. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, what I, are the people, what, what are the people who are still, I, I get what the people who are the atheist schism folks, they just, they want to be, they're purists wanting to be atheists. Mm -hmm. And, but the people who are still drawn to the Sunday assembly, what is it they're looking for? Do you think, I mean, apart from the questions of uh, community and, and feeling like you're in a, in a gathering of like-minded people? Um, you know, I think having, having had a chance to talk with people at, at Sunday assembly London, I mean, I think a lot of people, they want a kind of more active disbelief. Um, so I think a lot of atheists, certainly when I grew up, I was kind of a lazy atheist. I vaguely didn't believe in God. It mm -hmm. was what I'd been taught growing up, but, mm -hmm. but didn't really think about what my disbelief meant, why other people feel religious, um, how I can create a kind of secular moral code way of living that, um, that maybe draws from religion, but, but is entirely godless. So I, I think that, that maybe people who, who attend Sunday assemblies are, looking for that kind of, that kind of more active thought process. Uh, they don't want atheism to be, or, or godlessness to be, um, you know, a, a tally of things that they, that they lack, mm -hmm. like lacking faith or, or this or that, but they want it to be something more active. Um, and, and certainly a lot of people uh, like the idea of having an hour a week where they can think about how they should live, set some goals, uh, that sort of thing. So, so I think it, it can be quite uh, an intellectual enterprise. On the other hand, I think probably a lot of people are there for the fun. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a house band, there's, there's food and book clubs and all sorts of things attached to the Sunday assembly. So um, for others, I'm sure it's more like a glorified community center almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess I'm a little confused by everyone's appropriation of the word godless, mm -hmm. but then one group wanting to say, we're a godless congregation, but we're not really going to talk about atheism. Sure. And then the sure. other one saying, we're a godless revival and we are going to talk about atheism. I mean, this, right. this split almost seems silly. I like, I, I, I you know, I, I think there's can... a difference. I think there is a difference in that, um, you know, according to uh, Lee Moore, who's one of the founders of the Godless Survivalists, mm -hmm. um, you know, according to him, he was he was told or, or asked by the Sunday Assembly um, headquarters <laughs> uh, not to bring in um, too many atheist speakers to have um, uh, people talk about a variety of topics. You know, Sunday Assembly London has had a vicar uh, address the crowd, and um, and I think that we will probably see the God, godless survivalists um, have a lot more sort of vocal, active atheists. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a bit more of a political edge to, to that group. Um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of atheists out there who would, who would like to get together and discuss prejudice they feel as a, mm -hmm. right. as a community. So, um, you know, I, I do think there is a difference and, and to the great credit of um, the Sunday assembly founders, they're very, uh, very open to criticism. Um, I've published a number of articles that are critical that are critical of their operations, and, and still they grant me interviews when I want to chat. Um, uh, Sanderson Jones he, he said something when the Godless Survivalists split off. It was something along the lines of, you know, we're one flavor of ice cream, and we right. hope there are different kinds of atheism to suit every palate. And I think um, 
you know, that's a really, it's a really healthy attitude to, to take, uh, as, and, you know, it stands in direct contrast to other groups, you know, other religious groups that, that I reach out to as a journalist and who refuse to grant me interviews, especially if they've read articles in, in which I profess to be an atheist. So, yes. mm-hmm. so again, I think, um, you know, I, I think there will be a lot of critics, um, but so far the, the group's been really receptive and, and respectful of those critics. It's interesting. It's almost like there's been, and it's all happened in this very sort of condensed period of time relative to uh, the development of, of changes in, say, Christianity over 2,000 years. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like there's been some sort of reformation and we're already seeing the different uh, denominations that resulted mm-hmm. from the reformation. I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of a clumsy analogy, but in a sense, you know, it's almost like they're all saying, well, we are all atheists. Um, but we have slightly different, um, we have a slightly different theology, if you will, on that yeah. or, uh, a slightly different approach. I mean, cause sometimes when you look at the differences between different Protestant denominations to an outsider, it can appear to be rather irrelevant, but to them, so those distinctions are very, very relevant. Sure. Uh, um, yeah, so. and you know, I, I think this also has something to do with uh, the organization of Sunday Assembly, um, especially in recent months. Mm-hmm. I think at the beginning, I mean, at the beginning, it was a local venture. It was um, it was an East London thing. It was mostly young people. It took place in this little deconsecrated church and was very casual. Um, and later, there were a lot more rules. And, and as I write, it became a lot more church-like. Mm-hmm. So there's now a very formal accreditation process and involves a peer review process and registering as a, you know, a nonprofit or a, um, some sort of small business. And, you know, there are all these steps that are taken and then that allows someone to have access to the Sunday assembly logo and trademark. You know, when you start creating a church, schisms will happen because, mm-hmm it's impossible to take uh, a model of atheism that was originally suited to 20 siblings in East London and transport it globally and have everyone be okay with it. Right. Um, you know, a, a, another approach, I, I suppose the Sunday assembly could have taken, you know, another approach would have been to not have that kind of centralized structure. And then, and then maybe schisms wouldn't have happened because different branches could just respond to the needs and fancies of local communities. But, um, but sure, I, I mean, I, I, I read some blog that said, you know, the Sunday Assembly, we had the, the whole history of Christianity in, you know, one month of the Sunday Assembly. So <laughs> right, right. Maybe, it, maybe that's a universal. So, um, but, you know, I know here in the U.S., I've covered atheism and secularism conferences, and mm-hmm. you can get into a discussion with somebody who can recite to you the finer points of the distinctions between a humanist, a secular humanist, a free thinker, a skeptic, an atheist, and a, you know, it, the list an goes on. Yeah. And right. And so, and in a sense, these Sunday assemblies, I think were an effort to bring all those kinds of people together to the mm-hmm. extent that they weren't, um, opposed to the idea of going to something that was called a church or as it resembled sure. a church or to the extent that they weren't already probably, you know, maybe going someplace like a unitary universalist church mm-hmm. um, or, you know, a humanist Jewish congregation or something like that, because those things also exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, non-believers are welcome in, in UU churches and, sure. you know, maybe if you want a church kind of thing that is already there for you. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's sort of, you know, it's sort of interesting. They were trying to bring, I, I think, what may be at a, at, a, at a granular level, people who had very different ideas about what they wanted this thing to look like, bringing them all together. And so maybe these sorts of schisms were inevitable. I mean, I, I think that's possible. And, and I, I think, you know, the Sunday Assembly will still attract people mm-hmm. of different atheist varieties Mm -hmm. you know and and beyond i remember at my first service and there was a moment where uh we had to kind of turn to the people near us and introduce ourselves and i started chatting with a a young guy near me and and it turned out he's a catholic and quite devout and he had been to real church in in the early morning and then come to our you know secular church afterwards and he really liked it and was going to come every every month so i think you'll still see that variety um 
And he liked it as, a, as an add-on to having gone to Mass in the morning. Yeah, he liked uh-huh. it as an add-on. You know, uh-huh. it, there was an interesting lecture. I think at that point it was, um, you know, a historian talking about traditions of Easter and that sort of thing. So there, were, there was certainly, um, there is certainly a lot for, for people to gain, even if they, they do have a faith. Now, I think um, it's possible and I, to criticize, and I have criticized, the actual uh, quality of the sermons um, that the Sunday assembly offers. But, um, but regardless of that, I think there's still uh, a lot of attraction for, for people who have different kinds of levels of disbelief. Right. And so you talk about that a little bit in this piece, your criticism of some of the lectures. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit more? Well, I mean, so something that attracted to me, uh, attracted me to the uh, Sunday Assembly was the promise of a thoughtful sermon every month. And I think this is probably, you know, I had just finished grad school. I missed, uh, I missed the school setting. I missed being exposed to ideas and conversations that I wouldn't right. normally come across myself. Um, I haven't really, really found all of the sermons to be terribly thoughtful. Uh, I think at the last service I went to... Um, you know, I was excited to hear a physicist talk about the history of physics and and that sort of thing. And and instead, it was kind of four minutes, five minutes, read like a Wikipedia page. Wasn't that interesting? You know, I, again, I'd gone to meet new people, and and instead there was this kind of you know stilted conversation in the lobby at the beginning, and then no designated time to uh, chat with people during the service. Um, so so. For me, the the execution of the the assembly in London hasn't hasn't necessarily met my expectations. Um, mm-hmm. But that's not to say it can't or it won't um, or it doesn't for some people. But um, but yeah. Also, the music but, is really loud, and I'm a bit of an old person that way. It was <laughs> <laughs> right. But what I was going to say with regard to your point about the about the lectures, um, you know, I think that. For a lot of religious people, a lot of religious people do a lot of searching before they settle on a church or a synagogue or a mosque. You know, they, they they want to make sure that the that the um, that the rabbi, imam, preacher, pastor sort of meet their standards for perhaps intellectual rigor, maybe yeah. uh, religious rigor. And so the idea of like, well, you, you've been to the one and it didn't really measure up to what your expectations were. Mm -hmm. I think that's like a really common experience uh, for anyone who's looking for a congregation. Um, And maybe in a way that means that, you know, the, the atheist church movement, or if you want to call it that, uh, has some of the same issues that churches and other houses of worship have. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good point. I mean, you, you know, I would hope that in a few years' time, people have a nice choice of of uh, atheist churches to attend. I think the Sunday Assembly tried to um, sort of bypass some of that, uh, some of those issues related to affinity with the you know preacher mm-hmm. um, by mandating that that chapters have uh, rotating MCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, in London, there hasn't been a rotating MC for whatever reason, um, but I do think it's a good idea. I think it would, uh, I think it would make it easier for people to to find a single church that they could kind of get along with if if there wasn't one charismatic leader dominating. Right. But, well, ch- charisma, charisma yeah. is a, is a is an issue that I was thinking yeah. about as you were talking because I think for some people, I mean, depending on your religion and your denomination and your orientation for some people in religion, they're looking for someone who's, you know, very scholarly and educated. So they might be looking for that. Other people are maybe just looking for that pure charisma, that pure yeah. ability to sort of connect with what people are thinking and connect these complicated ideas exactly. to your life mm-hmm. um, and not abstract um, these religious ideas so much that you can't, you you feel like it, you're not oriented around them at all. Exactly. Uh, Exactly. So we've got we've got, you know, two stand up comics in London, but but elsewhere, you know, Harvard University has a humanist community, right. which is really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, atheism and humanism, not necessarily the same thing, but, right. but it is a secular community. And, and right. that um, I think that leadership is, is quite um, uh, 
intellectual, mm -hmm. um, the, the, what they offer is more intellectually rigorous, but, but yeah, again, it's, it's a matter of preference. So, you know, I think that, you know, in the, in the evangelical and charismatic Christian world, you know, the, the charisma, uh, not in a religious sense, but maybe in, the, in a just a more personal sense is a huge thing because yeah. a, a preacher who can, um, you know, pick up the mantle of, of, uh, starting a church and get people to come. I mean, that, that is what draws people. If, you know, mm -hmm. the, the religion has already been there. Some people are looking for somebody new, somebody fresh, somebody yeah. who's really going to motivate them or inspire them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I wonder, like, is that, do these atheist churches have, and I'm not saying that the atheist churches have to mimic, I think that's one of the problems is like this tension over whether they need to mimic sure. actual churches or not. Um, but I do think that personal charisma is a huge draw. And in, you know, like I said, in the evangelical world and the charismatic Christian world, that can be the soul draw for a lot of people. Sure. It's like, I like that, that guy. Um, mm -hmm. And if that guy left and went to another church, they might follow him there as opposed to just keep going to that church. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah so, I mean, so, I mean, are these figure? do these figures, are they, are they, is this um, more the one in New York? Or is he somebody that people are drawn to, or is he more of just an organizer who who helped bring about this schism so that the atheists could be more overt about their atheism? Yeah. Um, you know, I think charisma is probably just as important, if not more important, um, uh, for, for atheist churches, mm -hmm. just because people aren't going to be, you know, no one's going to be guilted into going to an atheist church because they think... <laughs> Right. You know, someone will smite them from right. above or something. So, exactly. so they, they they have to be more actively drawn. Um, and and certainly the Sunday Assembly London founders are like oozing with charisma. That is not what they lack. Um, uh, but but I think charisma is really important. But again, it's this question of clicking. Um, mm -hmm. it's just like it's just like a university. You know, if there's a good professor who gives good lectures and is fun, then more students will take the class, even if um, the subject matter is not as interesting. So, mm -hmm. um. So, yeah, I mean, I guess to build a church, you need charisma, I would think. And, and I think with atheists, you, you might need a little more. So what do you think the future is for for not just the Sunday Assembly, but the idea of these atheist churches, the godless revival? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, to start with the Sunday Assembly, I, I think there will probably be lots of chapters that open up fairly successfully. I'm not sure it will be like as huge, um, as the founders would have liked. Mm -hmm. They started a, um, Kickstarter campaign, like a internet fundraising campaign, um, with a goal of raising, I think half a million pounds, um, recently. And they've, um, only met, you know, a fraction of that goal. Um, but overall, I mean, it seems to me that, um, the, the effort to build a more organized atheism is growing uh, it's taking off. And, and I wouldn't be surprised to see more, if not atheist churches, then at least sort of secular meeting places for, um, for, for non-believers. And, and I have a feeling a lot of, a lot of people will call them atheist churches anyway, because um, certainly for the Sunday assembly, a lot of PRs come from that. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely true. I mean, I think that in a way, the, um, the, uh, Sunday assembly folks have become the face of mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. and that's what people, people associate it with them exclusively that they've been a little right. successful. I think something mm -hmm. they have been successful at is the branding part of it. Yeah, for sure. And, and now they're selling t-shirts and assorted swag. So I, I think there is a, definitely a, a strong brand, um, and a good name and a good, um, and a good motto. Uh, what is it? Um, wonder, live better, what, wonder know, more, live better, mm -hmm. help often wonder more. Right, right. I think it's great actually. Uh -huh. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I also suspect that a lot of ventures that start up will be more more locally based and they'll be less concerned with branding. Um, we'll probably see a variety. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a really interesting phenomenon to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think particularly in the U S because atheism still has such a stigma attached to it, yeah. despite the presence of some very prominent atheists here. Um, and it, I, I think it, it it just still has a huge stigma attached to it. Yeah. And I think that as these atheist churches develop and mature and change and have their schisms and so forth, um, they're going to be scrutinized more both by the atheists themselves and by non-atheists who are going to look for any way to try to demonstrate that, you know, the atheists just can't pull anything off yeah, or yeah. that they're wrong or what have you. So Sure, sure. Um... But, you know, I think, I think this scrutiny is, again, really, really healthy. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, you know, it's probable that if there are sort of big umbrella groups like the Sunday Assembly that continue to grow, we'll, we'll see some of the problems that we see in traditional churches. Hopefully not, you know, like pedophilia scandals and, and you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, we'll, we'll see some of the institutional problems, right. we'll problems with leadership. There'll be questions about minorities and women and, mm -hmm. and, um, and funding and, and all, all those sorts of things. And, but, control. Um, and control. And control. You know, because they will sure have to control. create, mm -hmm. there's no denominational structure to tell them, you know, oh, like, you know, here is your minister and your deacons do this and your right. presbytery does this. Right. Um, you know, they'll, that will have to be created and it would have to be created to the satisfaction of both the people running it and the people attending it. It. those are challenging issues yeah and I think you know I think in a way it's a challenge too for individuals as I said I think that um you know it's it's one thing to to not believe in God and it's another thing to approach that disbelief actively and sort of think about what it means and how it influences one's life and um and and how one defines priorities in the absence of uh, religious belief. So I think it, it will be a struggle, but I think it's a really, it, it should be a really welcome opportunity. Um, and, and yeah, and then there'll be lots and lots and lots of atheists who would never set foot in an atheist church. Right. And, and that will um, never change. And that will never change. <laughs> right. Well, listen, thanks so much for talking to me. Um, the piece is uh, at, at CNN's website. Mm -hmm. We have a link uh, uh, for it here on Blogging Heads and you should go read it. It's really interesting. And check out Katie's website and um, thanks again. And maybe we can do this again. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Bye. Bye.